Hi everyone and welcome back. So in the last video we have done the restructuring. Now we have the resolver folders, uh, dbmock database. We have index.js which is combining or collecting everything together, the resolvers and type definitions. Type definition is a separate independent file where you can define all different types you want in a one single file. Okay, and we have all the resolvers. So everything looks structured now and we are able to run this. And we can also see uh, this working. We can now also can see the mutations here, right? Mutations are something which is changing the state, right? Create user, update user, delete user, create post, update post, delete post, create comment, update comment, delete comment. These all can be a mutation. I mean, these are just the basic examples. And these are some custom types we have. We are exposing here, right? Create user, delete user. And you can call these mutations same as query. This is add query and this is here. You need to pass the whole JSON payload, which talks about, okay, because it is taking the cre uh, created date user input, right? Which should have name, email, is in this payload. We haven't created the, the mutation properly. So I'm not testing that here, but we can test all the queries. Okay, so this is just about restructuring and everything is working as expected. We want it, right? So now what we are going to do, the another change is, you might have seen that in each and every resolvers, we are importing this DB definition, right? So is there any way we can pass uh, these DB definitions in the resolver function? So we need to understand that uh, definition of all these parameters. Parent argument, so whenever you are passing any argument in the payload in the body, I mean, we are just only hitting the HTTP post with the query and mutation. So everything will goes in the argument and the context, anything you are passing in the context. So GraphQL server is taking three or four argument, right? First is type definition. Another is a resolver. Third is a context. And this context can be accessed in your query and in your mutations. So what we will do is uh, we are going to pass this DB. This DB you can consider it as a database source. Okay, we are going to export only DB from here. So we can say const database. Const database and this database contains all these things. Users, then we have posts and we have comments. Then we can do export default database and we can import this database definition inside of index.js. This is in the same folder structure. Import database from db. And if I wanted to access anything, then I can do a database. Let's just call it as a db for the shorter syntax. And now I can pass this in the context. Okay, this DB context can be accessible to any query and any mutation or any type definition. So how we will access it? Let's go to any of your resolver like comments. Okay, I can access this. This context is the same object and I will just use it. Now I can just say DB dot. So db contains all the users comments and posts so i need to make this particular change everywhere and we don't need to use this import definition now this is comment same we can do for the mutation wherever we are using we can change that definition okay and now we are going to access this comment posts and users from db dot okay, sorry for this now I can do is db dot maybe this may not be the better naming we can put something else db dot users same we have to do for the queries and for all the types right posts queries and users okay in query we have this context as a second argue third argument we can use db there and then from db we can access db.posts db.comment everything 
okay here we have post so i can say db dot here i can say db dot right so this this is the minor change we are doing and why we are doing is because here we are passing this data source in the context and every query mutation can access this from the context object here it will be a data source it can be a simple mock json it can be a uh, your mysql database connection postgres database connections or here you can pass a lot of other things also like i wanted to pass the current logged in user object so i can pass it the session information currently logged in user session information you are maintaining you can pass it so this user session and db all can be accessed in the query and mutation to know what is the current user what is the role of current user if current user is logged in or not all those things you can access inside query and mutation so uh, that's it about this particular video which is talking about how to pass the context and how to access the context in your query and mutations